Dr Naomi Appleton, I'm a senior lecturer in Asian religions at the University of Edinburgh. So the text that's contained in the scroll is the Mahabharata, which is one of the great epics of India. It was composed probably between the 3rd century BC and maybe the 4th or 5th century CE, we're not quite sure. It's a really, really long poem in the Sanskrit language, uh, and it tells essentially of a, a big war between two sets of rival cousins. One of the things that makes the Mahabharata really important is the role that it plays in the history of Hinduism. So it's very closely linked to devotional forms of Hinduism that consider the god Vishnu to be the central deity. And that's because a character in the Mahabharata is Krishna, and Krishna is understood to be a, an avatar or a descent of Vishnu. And you can see evidence of that in the scroll. So not only do we have the text of the Mahabharata, written in beautiful but very tiny Devanagari script, we also have images that both illustrate events from within the story, uh, and these are the sort of larger square images that seem to punctuate the shifts between the different chapters in the Mahabharata, but also in some of the images that relate these to uh, this ideology around Vishnu. So this idea that Vishnu has multiple incarnations or descents, uh, one of which is Krishna, but several others of which are also illustrated in the images that accompany this manuscript. So that combination of the text, um, as far as I'm aware, nobody has really read this version to see what version or recension of the text uh, is contained in this manuscript. And then the images that go along with that. And then this bringing together as an object, uh, which will be uh, made available then to, to scroll through, much as I have done, uh, turning that handle and seeing how the text and the, the images go together to create such a beautiful object. This is a 72 meter scroll that's housed in this wooden box. Um, inside the box, there are four cylinders which you can uh, roll the scroll around to view it. Um, and when I first assessed this item um, and its condition, I noticed that there were lots of small tears along the edge and also the silk lining um, that's underneath the scroll was um, becoming caught in the winding mechanisms and pulling away further. Um, so the damage along the edge here is actually caused by this box, um, but rather than removing it from it, um, I decided to repair the tears along the edge. Um, so I didn't really want to remove it from the box um, because it's, it's, it's a part of its history now, even though it wasn't original to the scroll. So I decided to carry out um, surface cleaning first of all with just a soft brush to remove any loose surface dirt um, and then carried out tear repair along the edge. Um, and normally I would repair from the, the back of the item, but of course I can't get to the back of this one. So we came up with um, um, this platform to use, which is made from Perspex, and you, we just slipped it underneath the manuscript, and then that was a base for carrying out the tear repair on. Um, so for the tear repair, we used a wheat starch paste, which is a water-based um, adhesive. Um, that has excellent aging characteristics, so it's not going to discolor over time or lose any of its um, stickiness. Um, and it's also a reversible adhesive, so if in the future they want to take away any of the repairs that I've done, um, they can do that. Um, and I also use um, Japanese paper, which um, is uh, really lightweight, but also very strong because of the, the long fibers. Um, so I used a 5 GSM um, Japanese paper to repair um, the tears along the edges to make sure they wouldn't get any worse um, and result in any loss of text or um, image. In April 2017, we set out to digitise our beautiful manuscript scroll of the Mahabharata. As one of the top items in our collection, it was marked as a priority for digitisation. So when a customer requested the 78 miniatures, it seemed like a good opportunity to digitise it in its entirety. Our plan was to photograph the scroll in sections, stitch them together, and then cut them into tiles that could be that would sit together seamlessly when delivered by the universal viewer. However, once the photography was set up, it was actually quite quick, but it was always going to be the post-production work, uh, which was the time-consuming part. I experimented a little with automated stitching software. However, I found that the dense text confused the algorithms, while the um, ripples caused discrepancies in alignment. In the end, I just found it was quicker to work manually. It has been a fantastic project to be involved with, 
And it's exciting that innovative software developments like IIIF are allowing people to access complicated originals in ways that were unimaginable only a few years ago.